Rapid Secret and Hellraisers. They're the only two teams that have yet to play in Group B. So all of Group B is going to get underway here after this series. And I got to say, this is exciting, man. This is like the, the first big game I think I've, I've seen since DAC. Or, or what could be considered a big game. We've done a lot of Canada Cup. There's been a lot of different like major all-stars and stuff going on. But as far as a, a big two teams are concerned, I think this is it. Hellraisers versus teams. Yeah, it's also it's also fun when it's the beginning of a season because everything's fresh. They're everyone's on an even keel. Everyone's trying their best. <laughs> that might change at the end of the season. We'll see how things do turn out. These teams, uh, what can they go toe to toe? Sixteen seconds left before the game. All pick now done. Storm Spirit for Hellraisers could take over the game, but the Magnus pick I think is pretty big. Magnus PA, which is something we didn't talk about, but that is a pretty strong combo. Give the PA the empower. You get that cleave damage going. You got pretty good right click potential coming out from the Phantom Assassin. And this PA could certainly take over the game later on down the line. I think that uh, this could be a problem for Hellraisers. They do have the PL, mind you, which is going to finally jump into the game. Artez. And I think Artez is going to be playing your safe lane PL, I imagine. 1 1 1. I'm not sure who this is. They change their name so often, it becomes a problem. Hold on. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, I'm not too familiar with their names anyway. I recognize Dread. I recognize, I guess I recognize most of their names, but yeah, I don't know who that is. I think it's Gortz, actually. He usually plays the three position for Hellraisers, so I have to imagine. Okay. I, I I have to imagine that's who it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm very interested to see how PL pans out. Um, and, and like you mentioned, the Magnus plus uh, any kind of melee carry is very, very strong. PA, who's probably already going to build Battle Fury. I guess now you don't really have to build Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. I've seen you go, I've seen PAs go different builds where they can rush something like Manta or Lifesteal Manta and then just fight a lot earlier rather than using the first 25 minutes to farm because now you have the early empower. So it, it just depends on what RTZ wants and what Secret wants as a team, whether they want him to get involved early on. Oh no, Puffy. Is he going to get caught? Trouble, he saw actually. them in the, in the jungle. There's no Berserker's call coming out for, for Goritz. And I think if Goddamn had thrown down his Earth Spike, maybe they get the kill. But Kuroki's going to rotate in. And Goddamn's going to pick the S-Hex up. They're going to try to fight this. The Skewer down onto two. Goddamn in trouble. The Gale's going to hit. Kuroki gets the first blood. How did that turn around? Hellraisers, all they had to do was call. And maybe even get an Earth Spike. And they would have gotten that first blood. And they decided, now we're just going to give it away, I guess. We're going to let Hellraisers take it. Kind of a weird fight there. Yeah, I... I... Or even if he just got his um, his battle hunger with a hex. I mean, hex is a super long duration level one, and he did finally skill it, but it was very late. So they just they they weren't very sure whether they wanted to skill a different ability on axe other than the whirling or sorry other than the counter helix, and it, it cost him right there. He did skill it in the end, so that means he won't have a problem farming up just the jungle and taking stacks. He's not even gonna go bottom at this point. Yeah. Um, what do you think about sacking the the offline in this situation? I mean, S4 is gonna get plenty of farm now. Yeah, I. Yeah, I guess I. I just put that together. That's gonna be S four for in the bottom lane. Um, I guess it's fine because you're probably not gonna get much against the Venomancer zoning out anyway. Venomancer is a pretty good zoning support, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're you're totally freeing up, not only just S four, but you're freeing up farm for the uh, for Kuroki on the Venomancer. Like this means he can just pull, pull, pull. He doesn't have to worry about doing anything else. Yeah, top lane. So I take a little bit of damage. He's got four stacks on Dread. Five actually hits the next one. Okay. And uh, the one problem I see here with Secrets lineup is it's an innate problem whenever you pick a Bat Rider with the jungler is that most of the jungle is going to be occupied by this jungler with just Chen. So it's not going to like be like he can just go back to the jungle once he can't do anything and just take a bunch of stacks because one, he has Chen. Two, they've already uh, actually used a bunch of time and awards from Hellraisers to actually block some several camps. So. They used two sentries here to try to deward this one camp. Zai? Or... He's going what for is a he? kill. Firefly is going up, and actually, uh, Gorns barely lives there. Zai almost gets that kill. He's being very aggressive. He canceled the health potion, though. That's pretty big. Axe is going to have to just wait to stack. Nope, he's not even going to hit the stack. He's going to go back to heal. That's really he's big. He's going to buy a salve. I think he might just kill himself here, and then fairy... Uh, no, he's fairing the salve out. Okay, so he's not going to go down. He'll salve up, and then return to jungling. So Zai already being very aggressive with the Bat Rider play, making sure... They try to do as much as possible. I, as I was saying, though, this is really big that they, they block the camp here with the Sentry Ward in the Chen jungle, and then they have the Observer Ward. Top lane, are they diving? They're going to use the Maledict. Artez, he already used his uh, Phantom Lance. He's going to use it again. The right-click Firefly coming out. Zai should live. 
Maldick not going to do enough. Maybe the last proc might kill him. Will it? I think now it looks so. Oh, 20 HP. That was very close, though. These these creeps that Axe are getting in the jungle, too, were, like, the worst. Centaurs are so bad. They give li very little experience. They hurt a lot. Um, they don't have the swiftness attack aura, which actually makes a difference for because it means they're not attacking as fast, which means they can't proc your counter helix as much. And their bounty is pretty bad. Like, they don't give much bounty. This is one of the worst jungle creeps for Axe. You want to get to that medium camp, get the mud golems, the best, easiest the, camp, I think. The blue satyrs are, like, by oh, far yeah. the best. They, they hurt yeah, yeah. For, hit for nothing. They give you over a level, an entire level of it, so at least a level one. They're going to rotate, goddamn, by the way, bottom lane, because they realize that they're not getting anything extra, I think, out of this top lane. They might have been able to kill Zai with the help of the Witch Doctor, but they just say, we're going to prioritize levels down the line more so than anything else, which I think is a good choice. As long as he gets that 6 early on, I think it's a, it's a solid decision. But Zai will get a lot more out of his top lane if they're not careful. Yep. One of the things, too, that I, I, I see here is that PA against... Oh, there's a Gale, actually, on the Afo Ninja. So Kuroki has made his way towards mid. He's actually uh, opted out of not getting Plague Wards. I like this. Uh, I don't see many Venomancers do this. Of course, when, when he's a core, he almost always maxes the Plague Ward. But I think as a support, getting extra damage on your Gale and securing a kill with it is... It's actually pretty good, and it's overlooked sometimes, so that's what Kuroki's done so far. Um, but I, I did want to bring up the point at up lane. Oh, Zai, I think he this just, time he's dead. Yeah, he's gonna, he pretty much killed himself by trying to go on Artez. He doppelwalked, uh, or doppelgangered. I'm gonna say doppelwalked from now on. And uh, god damn it, trouble down the bottom rune spot. S4 gets the kill, right click, shockwave came through, so kind of feeds himself away as well down in that bottom area, and S4 is able to get that kill. He's already up to his arcane, so he's doing pretty well for himself. No bottle, obviously, but... Still pretty solid for the Magnus. Yeah, Puppy's clearing out some stacks that he made for himself too, so... I mean, he's only level 3 at this point, but it's still not too bad considering two camps were blocked early on. He's gonna get level 4.5 after this. They're pinging out mid, they're pinging out mid. No, Afro Ninja, he's still only level 5. They've just five. been sitting on him. They've been like making sure Afro Ninja can't walk up here because Kuroki's been babysitting RTZ. RTZ has a higher CS to this mid lane. He has 22 CS to the 17 of Afro Ninja. Broki oh. might walk into Axe. He is actually going to run into him. The Gale's going to go, and Axe might die, but he might be able to turn and get the Kuroki kill. He's so slow from that Gale. The right-click body he block. He should get denied. He should get the kill, and he oh. will get denied, it looks like. In fact, he might live with Ring of Regen. I think... Oh, my God. It's going to be close. He's going to live. Okay. He's going to live. Wow. Yeah, the Ring of Regen. That's huge. Well, at the very you can say at the end of the day, it's some space created because the storm is uh, basically hasn't been doing anything for the last minute in mid now. As a result, if you see a CS at 17 compared to a 26 PA, this is a relatively even matchup too. Right? It's actually not really that one that hard by Storm, I don't think, because it's very difficult to uh, auto-attack the PA, even with just level 1 blur. So frustrating to deal with. Every miss is just a little bit more room that the PA has to work with in this middle lane. And Arteezy already has his coup de grace, so he can go on FNJ if he wants to. And he already has gone on him once with the Stifling Dagger and the Phantom Strike. And so now FNJ has to be careful until he hits 6, which he's going to get there soon. But yeah, he, he pretty much has to sit back for the most part here until he gets a, another level or two. Kuroki at the bottom rune spot. He has Tranquil Boots down bottom. Goddamn died once, but he's back up to about level 4. Shockwave's going to go. That actually takes out half of his health. Goddamn literally takes one Shockwave and almost dies for it because he's a lion. So that's unfortunate. Oh, he's got no vision down here of the bottom rune, so they don't know that Kuroki's down here, nor do they know that he picked up the rune. If he gets a Gale, this is 100% dead, and he does. Yeah, got him, is dead. Nice Earth Spike. That'll save his life momentarily. Uh, Kuroki with all the damage hits him once with Poison Sting. It kills him immediately. And now they might put pressure on the tower. They don't have Plague Wards, but... Uh, that's fine for the most part. What about Zai top lane? How's he doing? He just gets his Tranquil Boots, so not necessarily the best Batrider game, but Artez runs at Zai, throws up the uh, Phantom Lance, and... That Phantom Rush actually doing work, closing the gap quite quickly. What a hero. Yeah, the, the one problem, like I said, with this lineup is that Zai won't be getting much. Unless he really dominated top, he can't go into the jungle. He can maybe go in now, like if Chen wants to start roaming around. He's almost level 6 on Chen, one more creep. Or sorry, yeah, one more yeah, one more creep and he'll have it. Oh, Zai, get it going on again. That's a ton of damage onto him. And he is dead, and I believe... I don't know if this is for sure. I don't know if it was just going away, but does Doppelganger take away the uh, stacks? I, he had six stacks on him, and then they went if away. If it does, that, that ability is broken. I'm just throwing that out there. That seems not... I I don't know. 
I, I don't know if it was the duration going off or maybe that disjointed it, but he definitely had six stacks and then they were all gone. So. Does Doppelganger Opto work like a Manta style or something? Or I, I, like I said, I've never played a new hero, so That's... I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to start trying him out now that he actually made it to captain. You just play him in pubs. You'll, you'll probably win every game with him. I don't know. That seems <laughs> logical. Uh, F and NJ still farming mid. So yeah, top lane. Artez gets another kill. He's actually got two assists, no kills. He's picking up a Gloves of Haste, so what could be a Midas, if you wanted to buy Trez, he certainly could have already. They're going to jump in. Affin and Jay thought about jumping Art Artesian, so he's going to get jumped on. He has to ball lighting up to the high ground. Takes two crits to the phase and still stays alive. Artesian can't get the kill. Does not have Phantom Strike off cooldown. It's a pretty long cooldown that first level. They are rotating around on the backside. Dred's going to throw up. They're going to get the cast. TP's going to come in. He has Phantom Strike available. They can't get there. He was running away from Goddamn. Does get the Hex off on S4. Now they're going to jump back at Affin and Jay. Stays alive. No crit procs coming in. Arteezy gets Hand of God. There's going to be the Skewer. No RP coming out from S4. Shockwave. Dread low, but still alive. Bottling up. Staying alive. His 10 stick charges. Zai going a bit too deep. Artez TP's in. This might be a problem. Now they have the Wild Wing. All five heroes have rotated to the mid lane. Artez getting chased down. Secret desperately wants something here. They might find it here. RTZ finally jumping in. The cast going the Maledict as well. But where is the follow-up? Shockwave. Artez lives with 50 HP. What's happening? The crazy fight. Gale misses oh, on both Artez so and Dread. That was just the tip, and it just missed for poor Kuroki. And they will not secure a single kill off the back end of that fight after rotating five heroes to the middle lane. That was hectic. Yeah, we'll see if they can make this rotation really work by pushing, but it doesn't look like they're going to try to do it. It's just going to take too long to get the tower down. i got to say, that was some of the luckiest critting I've seen from a PA in a long time. It feels like he crit on everything. The dagger, he actually went in on the storm initially, dagger, and then uh, blink struck to him. And uh, he got two crits directly in a row <laughs> from auto attacks. Just crit, crit. It's pretty insane RNG here coming out for RTC. So if that's um, just a preview of things to come for him for the rest of the game, I think he'll be doing just fine. Ice Rock, please. Arteezy's getting all the crits in the world at this point. F and NJ backing up. He doesn't want to get crit by that PA. He's pretty squishy in terms of how much HP he has. And although level 1 crit doesn't do the most damage in the world, it's still enough to work with. So he'll back up. He's going to be getting his soul ring after that. Probably goes for the Orchid. Um, Bloodstone first is okay, but we'll see how things go. And I'm surprised Puppy didn't rotate early on in this game. He kind of just sat in the jungle. Usually we see like anywhere from like 3 to 4 minutes, somebody rotate out and try to go on a hero mid. Especially Storm Spirit is very susceptible to ganks. Early on in the game, he didn't go for it. And uh, instead, after NJ stays alive for the most part. And they don't give the jungle up. Now Zai has room to farm in the jungle. He's got a thousand gold at 10 minutes. So this might be a little bit of a late blink. But that's, op that's okay because S4 has his blink at 10 minutes as the safe lane farmer. So they really prioritize that blink dagger getting done. Yeah, unfortunately, he goes to the jungle and he finds mud golems in one of his stacks. So kind of crabby for him. It's going to be a late blink. It's to be expected. Like, that's not an easy lane at all for him. He can't go into the jungle. And there's an RP wow. with the blink. Just like that, they're even going to hit the last off. Nice chain of abilities coming out. and NJ almost survived that, but unfortunately with the last it was not able to get out. Just a really solid gank. That first blink coming to use and getting a kill for S4. Uh, it's exactly how they planned it, I'm sure. And a nice pickup. And now they can start putting pressure on this mid-tier 1 tower. I don't know if they get the kill, but... Let's see. This is the Midas coming out for Artez on that PL. So he's top lane, and PL with the Midas, they have some late game capability here. If they can we'll get away with this mid. tower, it's really huge because they're only using two heroes to do so. They have three others farming the other sides of the map, so getting this tower is actually a, a huge steal from Secret. And it looks like they're going to get it. Arteezy gets the last hit, even. That's really big. Dread taking extra damage from the Seder Tormentors. If he gets a crit on this, and he does get a crit oh on this Lord. Lightning Dagger. And he and they send the RTZ kill. back as it's happening. They are trying to get one of the Seder Tormentors. They'll get him, but... Jeez, it's critting, man. Yep, Yasha picked up for PA, so as I suspected, he's not going to rush the Battle Fury. You don't really need to when there's a Magnus on your team. That's one of the beauties of it. It saves you a lot of gold of time. Doppelganger's going to go. Artez is going to try to TP out. He'll make. There's no way to stun him or disable him from TPing, so... That's a smart play, a heads-up play from Artez, but he he's not really safe in any lane that RTZ shows up to at this point in the game. Yeah, he did go Midas too. I don't know if you touched on that, but yeah, I just don't. Yeah. I don't know what the the general build is for PL anymore. I don't know if you go for the same items like Infusal or something. Or I still feel like it's very similar, like Diffusal, Manta, Heart, okay. things like that. Buff up your illusions because, I mean, obviously Diffusal is like core because your illusions will proc it. But yeah, 
Um, Midas, give you some extra levels. I, I can get behind that. I think that's fine. All right, yeah. Blink Tag on Axe. This is where HR's lineup really starts to shine, or I, or I think needs to do something, rather, yeah. um, against Secret's lineup. But it, the scary thing is, like I said, RTC doesn't have to farm up a ton of items to be totally useful. Like, he's already got a Yasha Quelling Blade, Quelling Blade to help you farm. He can start farming faster with Empower. It's just, I really like the Magnus plus Melee carry combo. It's really, really strong. I mean, they're getting a lot out of this map, not just for RTZ necessarily, but I mean, Puppy's even farming the Ancient Sound. Zai's been used in the jungle. He almost has a Blink Dagger. Even Kuroki's getting a little bit off the map as well in that bottom lane. So I agree with you. They have the Blink Dagger for Goritz right now. They have to make something happen. They don't spot out Kuroki. I think they might know that he's there, but for the most part, they're waiting. I mean, and this axe has been pretty much quiet, silent the entire game. Uh, now with the Blink Dagger, you have to make something happen here. That's the main focal point of the hero. We'll see if they can get anything accomplished. Meanwhile, the rest of Secret Squad up towards that top rune spot, they're going to smoke up. There's absolutely no Observer Ward for the Dire team. They might be able to get the kill on Artez. They probably dive past this tower. Artez has no idea this is coming, but neither does Kuroki, who's hexed up in the tree line. Uh, he might be able to make it out. Gortz checks the wrong way, and actually Kuro Kuroki TPs. That's, that's, that's pretty big. Artez, Artez is in a whole world of shirt. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, he's, oh. Or... You were blank berserkers call, but doesn't get on S4. Tez still alive, but just barely. Shockwave, they actually killed two Dread TPs in. He's also in a world of hurt. The last one comes in, ball lighting, double kill for Arteezy. Afternoon, just like, I need to leave, bye. And they get three quick kills. Arteezy still chasing. Let's get to Ninja, who's out of mana. He ball lightings. There's the stifling dagger. Phantom Stripe, Crip Proc, he doesn't have mana to ball lighting away, he's gonna fall, it looks like Tarkteezy gets the stifling dagger, walks away with a triple kill, four down for Hellraisers, what a disastrous fight in that top lane. Oh, that's not, that is not good. The nice persistence from Arteezy, to just know that he has the extra movement speed from Yasha and Face Boots, to just stay on him. Goddamn, is actually in some trouble bottom, he gets the hex if there's a crit, he's dead. One crit, doesn't oh. get it. Does not get it. That not, that lucky. <laughs> not that lucky. Not that lucky. Honestly, that that would I would I probably would have walked away. Just the RNG at that point is too <laughs> just much. Just walk away from the cast. Yeah, it's happened before. Arteezy is going to back up the Phantom Lancer coming in, and it'll take some damage, but he's okay for the time being. So Invasion is going to be good against the uh, uh, the illusions and whatnot from PL2. Yeah. I just think the uh, this Chen combo like they they run Chen so well in secret. I think it's kind of kind of. Maybe silly almost not to ban it. Like he's yeah. just they just know how to work with it. I'm missing kills now just because it's happening so often at this point. No, nah, Dread gets blown up. Though. Ooh, the figure comes out for goddamn. That's a little bit of angst coming through from the line, so they blow up the Venomancer, but He said a, he said a veil, by the way. Solo support uh, Venomancer a veil. That's how you know you're having a good time. They are getting plenty of kills. They're getting enough items across the board where he's actually more farmed than the, the Bat Rider is the least farmed hero on their team, and he has a Blink Dagger. So that just shows you how well Secret are playing with all five of their heroes at this point. And you look at it, and Witch Doctor drastically underfarmed at another level. They're going to jump in RP onto Afton and Jay. Arteezy's going to jump in, crits him once in the face, and dies. He literally just got skewered back. Arteezy hits him once and gets the kill, and he's now unstoppable. Top lane fight happening. There's going to be Zai getting Berserker's call, but the last who comes out onto Goritz. Zai will try to bottle up and actually gets the kill with the flame break. Now Goddamn getting chased down. He's getting pinged on. Goddamn's like, I actually am out of mana. He does have six tick charges. But if he dies here, he's already pretty close to his blink. Might be able to throw up his earth spike and will, but S4 comes up and Goddamn's like, I can't secure this kill. RTZ. <laughs> Typical PA contribution. Phantom Strike into crit gets the kill. And he's 7 0 1. That is, uh, that's not good. For Hellraisers. Kuroki is using the Gale casually with his Veil onto a creep wave. Yeah, they, they, they feel pretty confident in this game. They haven't lost a tower yet. Arteezy's got really high movement speed. He actually might even get a... Is he going to dive into he gonna this? Get he might die. Pull long range. That was the longest range pull I've ever seen. They're going to use the ultimate, but the Witch Doctor it doesn't get off for very long. And Arteezy just walks away. Maldic's not going to take him down. The Mech Aura coming through. He'll use a Stifling Dagger on an Illusion. He'll be able to bottle back up here in a moment. Everybody's bottom for Hellraisers, though all five heroes down here. Kroki's up top lane, still has a TP ready to go if he needs to TP into the tier one tower. But Hellraisers are just looking for something, anything that they could find in the map right now, and it's not looking easy. They might go in. Fresh new Empower for Arteezy. They pop the mech onto him. They find Goddamn again. 
He's so close to his blink dagger too. 1700. If he dies again, that's devastating. And it looks like that he is going to die. Son of Magnus doesn't care about that kill. He knows that one's secured, so he's trying to look for another one. But he can't find anybody. They possibly go towards Roshan. They counter ward the ward that's above it. And yeah, this should be pretty easy. This is a very clean game so far from Secret. He already has a gem. He has his mech done, boots of speed. He has four creeps to work with. The entire zoo is in the Roshan pit. Arteezy sitting there right clicking as well. And it's looking pretty disastrous at this point. If you're Hellraisers, you're desperately trying to get our tags for him. But even then, like you talked about, Valora's going to be a problem to deal with. Arteezy has an SMY and power is already doing work. He probably goes for a BKB at some point and then becomes almost unkillable. They're going to take down Roshan. They get the Aegis to our tour. They're going to put in some pressure onto the tier 1 tower down bottom. And Hellraisers are going to let this go or maybe try to contest probably at the tier 2 if they keep pushing. Still no blink for the lion. He was so close, and now he's only at 1,500 gold. Not a good game for Hellraisers thus far. Yep, artesi has got a casual Morbid Mask. I imagine he builds a Basher here relatively soon. But, I mean, look at the net worth, man. It's scary. Other than PL, every single member on Secret is more farmed than any other member on HR. That's a horrible position, obviously, to be in. Artez might even die as well. He already used his doppelganger. He is going to get lasted up. He's going to get right click down. Shockwave comes through as well. S4 actually blinks over to the secret shop just to cut off the retreat, but he's dead anyways. And they get the deny on the tower as well. Mid lane, Death Ward going. Dread did get ulted. And Dread's just trying to throw anything that he possibly can to get these kills. But Axe does jump in. Puppy's probably going to die here. Coin Blade is going to go. Gets the kill. Centaur Conqueror stop. He tried to TP right in front of the Centaur and then dies for it. I don't even know if that's worth it. I mean, I guess you get a kill, but... I mean, even when they're getting kills, they're losing out. And that he, didn't kind of game. Kill, he didn't even kill one member of the Chen army. So, yeah, you got the kill on Chen, but... best The worst part about dying as a Chen is usually you die and your creeps will die too, or at least most. Some of them will die. None of them died for Chen, so he doesn't have to walk back and waste his time to go to the, go to the jungle and find new creeps. So, he can just come right back and just... Do whatever he, it is he wanted to do when he when he uh, before he died, and it's going to be a mask of madness here for Arteezy. He did go for a basher, so mask of madness into an ulti orb. So maybe I don't know, Scotty, something Scotty like that. Scotty seems. Scotty Lincoln. seems. Scotty's uh, probably pretty good. Yeah, I think like I see a lot of agility carries like going Scotty. Like SMY Scotty seems to be the choice for a lot of teams now. A lot of different heroes as well. Yeah. Like we see it all the time on troll. We see it all the time on. Um, all right, maybe just draw. I guess I'm losing it. Well, either way, Ortiz has got to go for the creep cam for the ancient camp here. <laughs> a lot of heroes, like yeah. troll and troll. You know, I had like other heroes for that, and then I, I don't know what happened. I all right, well, I'm tired. Everybody. I mean, troll is just... pretty popular, so it makes True. sense. You see it all the time on it. That hero seems amazing. Going mid, he's gone. We got this creep wave. He's got the rest of his squad behind him. Kuroki has got a point booster now, plus the gem that was given to him by Puppy after his death. Dai is still the, I believe he's, the, no, he's the second least farmed here on Secret. Ken is now down there after that death. Goritz is not going to get spotted out. That would have been a prime target, but instead they're going to go mid. They're probably going to lasso. Goddamn gets missed up. Afanenja getting the pull in. Uh, the figure's going to come out. Doesn't kill Zai. Hand of God goes. Arteezy hex up, has the ages. RP hits on the goddamn one of both, but actually Afanenja avoids it nicely. Gets to the mega kill streak. Arteezy looking to continue this. He still has itches. He's going to go to the high ground. Uh, Death Ward's going to go dread. Gets crit twice. Oh, man. He doesn't even need a bash. Arteezy says, yeah, that's fine. He's stuck in no man's land. He doesn't know where to go, whether to go forward or whether to go back. I don't know if that's the right <laughs> hero to jump on if you're the axe. You're just dead. That's a double damage PA, by the way. Double kill. God, like, Afrin and JTP's in. S4 looking to help out. Arteezy going to get mecked up by Puppy Stays Alive. The Phantom Lance coming in. Arteezy blinks to a creep. He'll die. The Aegis is finally going to get expended. They're still not even taking this tier 2 tower. Zai has lasso. Ball lighting further from Afaninje. Looking to use it. And Afaninje is kind of just breaking ankles here. S4 misses the skewer. They're really trying to go in all in for this uh, Stormer Spirit kill. They can't really grab him. He's too slippery. S4 was about to get sent back. No, Zai getting sent back. He could TP into the mid tier 1 tower and then walk down mid. Tier 2 tower will eventually fall. So they lose the Aegis and that is it. For secret, they just keep running at Hellraisers, and it actually works out in their favor. 22 minute defusal blade now for a PA or PL. We'll see if that can change anything. Highly, highly doubt it. This is just a very dominating performance so far from Seam Secret.
Uh, I mean, they're just they're taking no prisoners this game. Like they're not even, they're stopping for anything. RTZ is just being persistent and going for kills that most people would stop for. Uh, and because he knows his he knows his movement speed is just higher, and he knows that he can has the catching potential. On to even a hero like Storm Spirit who can zip away. He just you force him to keep using that mana, it means that he has no more mana to TP out. So if you can, if you can constantly make force him to use that in, in certain scenarios, then it just not only wastes his time and his mana, but it gives you the, a free kill, and he recognizes that. It's a very nice play from him. And they're doing it in the shadow of the tier three tower, the shadow of the tier four is even. Like they'll they'll be under like the tier four tower, they'll still go for the kill. That's how far ahead they are right now. Fifteen thousand net worth, fifteen thousand experience, pretty good lead for secret. And it's only going to get worse if, unless the PL can get farmed. Zai is going to back up. There's a couple of illusions coming through that he clears up nice with his Firefly. They'll give Kuroki the middle lane. He's getting closer and closer to Zagnum Scepter. He's 1,500 gold away. S4 TP's in. He's pretty much got his BKB. Uh, he'll have it now. He could purchase the recipe. He'll send it out to him. And Yep, it is going to be the uh, phase Mask of Madness Scotty PA. So, boom. Yep, you slap a basher on top of that. Like... You have maim chance, you got the constant slow from Scotty, you got a chance to bash him. They just don't go anywhere. It'd be pretty sick, but yeah, we'll see. I'm sure he's fine with his items at this point. Scotty, Scotty SNY, Mask of Madness at 23 minutes is pretty damn good. Not to mention I mean, how did they he have empower. Him? You have empower on himself, too. It's just, the empower is so goddamn good. How do you how do you take him down, also? I guess you have to get a really good Berserker's Call, and then hope he to God that you get oh. counter helix box. I missed the kill bottom, but Artes. With the help of Lion get a kill, and here we go. RP about to go, but they blink further. Now there's going to be the death board. Skewer cancels it. RP onto two. FNJ avoids it, but they lose two anyways. FNJ is like, well, time to leave. RTZ, they might kill two crits. RTZ gets the triple kill. That TP should have worked out for FNJ. Ice Frog, please. RTZ gets the double crit proc. And he is not dying this game. He is 12-0-3. RTZ with an outstanding performance, as he generally seems to have on these PAs whenever he plays them. Somehow. Yeah, this is this is really scary. Like even going into the next game, you gotta be really fearful or, or fearful of uh, just how well Secret's playing as a whole. Like they're playing very, very well. I still think it's a mistake, honestly, to give Puppy as Chen. Like I just think they run Chen as a team very, very well. Puppy knows when to rotate, knows when to farm, knows when to gank. And e even with, you know, you blocking several of his camps, it doesn't really matter against Chen, I would say, because he can move around a little bit easier than, say, a hero like Enigma. I, I mean, Enigma can't move to, like, say, dual lane and, and off lane or something like that, but Chen is okay with just having a couple of camps to work with. And uh, we saw here, this game, Puppy utilized it quite well. And then I think also the combination of the Magnus PA was a pretty solid... But, I mean, you, you yeah. don't necessarily ban that. Like, I, I agree with you. Like, banning Chen is probably priority number one in the next game. But if you ban Chen, then Enigma gets picked up for Puppy, and that's almost as frightening, honestly. You have, like, a four-and-a-half-minute BKB, or not BKB, four-and-a-half-minute cheese. It's four-and-a-half-minute black hole. Uh, <laughs> four-and-a-half-minute BKB. That's that's some next-level shit right there. Yeah, that would be pretty insane. I mean, yeah, I mean, Enigma is still quite scary. I just think that they run the Chen better as a team. Like, they... Yeah, yeah. It's... When he groups up at level seven at perhaps seven minutes, maybe eight minutes, with four creeps and a mech. It's, okay, mech probably not online that fast, but the point stands. If When he groups up with good creeps, it's very difficult when you know what you're doing on Chen to actually combat that. And like I said, it, when they pushed that mid-tier two tower, that was just two heroes. They won a small engagement, it was two heroes, it was Chen and PA with some creeps, while three other heroes were farming and they were able to easily get away with the tower push. That is why Chen is scary. Uh, and the crazy so thing think... is what they gain out of that, though. Like, it's the map control, honestly. You take down a tier 1 tower mid, and then what you transition that into, like, pressure into the jungle, which we saw a ton of from Secret, and taking away PL's farm in the jungle, taking away the Axis farm in the jungle, that's the biggest thing, I think. The tier 1 tower is nice, but... Uh... Oh, he oh, almost so gets close. it. He does cancel the RP. The skewer, I thought, hit, for sure, but doesn't end up canceling the TP, and he's able to get out. Real nice try there by S4, but... Yeah, and, and the whole idea of Secret, like, you know, running these kind of initiating cores or um, s heroes that can farm safely in the safe lane, even if they do get some kind of aggression in the off lane, like Magnus, you know, Quap was really popular, DAC for for S4 as well. Um, I think he even played Bristleback a, a couple times himself when Zai wasn't playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lasso from Zai. Lasso from Zai, onto Goddamn. He seems Zai had pretty a haste dead. Rune. 
Oh my god, he dragged him halfway across the map, it felt like. Zoom zooms his eye. And now with goddamn dead, no buyback, they can maybe try to push the high ground here. Arteezy pretty tanky has an eagle song at this point, probably going for a butterfly. S4 is nearby to empower. Help out with the blink RP. Skewers as well. He has a BKB. Puppy's nearby with Hand of God in the mech. I think you I don't know how you can test this. Like, Look Gorse this. is gonna have to make some big plays here. Look at his HP. He has the granite golem like you mentioned. 2700 HP. He's also got ice armor from a creep from uh from uh, Chen as well. He has some power. He's just got the entire team backing him up. And as a result, he's 12 and 0. And doesn't give two shits here as he's pushing the Rex. Yeah, Goritz is like, I've got to try to walk in. RTZ backs up slightly and he's like, I'll just finish this off quickly. They take the melee racks. They're not going to go in and get greedy and go for the, the range racks. They know that God aims back up. So they make a smart play. Hellraisers are barely hanging on this game, it feels like. And I mean, you, you talked about it. Puppy even has the Ogre Frost Mage, which was like bodyguarding Puppy the entire time in that fight. He's just like, I'll just throw up the ice armor. Arteezy's going to be fine. They can even wait for Roshan, honestly, at this point. And I, yeah, it's going to be up at about five seconds here. They'll TP Arteezy top lane. So he can't really Roche right now. They have to push out the top lane. But he does it so fast that this top lane's going to get killed. It'll clear like two or three creep waves and then maybe head back over to the Roche pit. And at that point, if you give another Aegis to Arteezy, I don't really think you can win. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's so hard at this point to kill him once, let alone twice. <laughs> Kuroki didn't send himself his full Aghanims. I think he messed up, but he had his, ag his Aghanims actually completed in base uh, on the uh, Venomancer. So Ag's Veil for your support Venomancer. Going to be doing a ton of damage with that. There is a DD top with Empower on a PA. Oh my god. And he's got a full Butterfly. So Butterfly coming out for him. Double damage, Empower, Aghanims for Venomancer. I mean, the list goes on and on with the kind of items and things that are going well for Secret. Not to mention, you have an Alpha Wolf on the side of Puppy. Look how much damage he's going to be hitting for. He doesn't want to pop his DD just yet because he doesn't need to, but my god. This is like Arteezy's dream situation. Everyone buff me up as much as possible and let's win the game. Oh, he does pop it. Ah, oh, I don't think he needed to pop it. Oh, because he needed to drop his bottle. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes, he's basically six slotted with a, with a Butterfly and an Aegis under his belt as well and uh the butterfly evasion the blur evasion coming out stacking not additively so arteezy feeling pretty confident about, about himself and where he's at currently in the game and all they need to do really is just take one fight and they pretty much win buyback status is probably not there hellraiser's artez is probably gonna get last one. Ooh, the doppelganger quick reaction four step he gets the last one anyways bkb pop from zai they one shot they one shot the witch doctor with arteezy he had a double damage rune that's unfortunate. He might even get goddamn. He does get hexed up. Arteezy has no BKB, so he can't really avoid that. But he doesn't really give a damn. DD's finally gone. So that extra bit of damage still has the empower. Has the alpha wolf as well. Mid rack's gone. It's going to get taken down by the creeps. They go for the tier 3 tower bottom. And Hellraiser's with no buyback on PL. I think this is just game over at this point. It's probably just done. So goddamn's going to try to fight. Zy will get silenced up. RP coming in on to 3. Appenage actually avoids it. Gortz is going to fall. They're going to skewer right into Appenage. The right click. The Poison Nova lasts for about five seconds before they all die. And Hellraiser's called GG. They know when they've been beaten. They were beaten maybe 10 minutes ago. Secret with a superb game. Yeah, absolutely. Like, from start to finish, it was all secret. Not even... I don't think there was even a glimmer of hope there for HR. Their one time to really kind of come back into the game was a blink on Axe, but they just couldn't get really...